Hello everybody and a very very warm welcome back to the MadVidPro AI YouTube channel. In today's video I am going to be teaching you guys how to install local AI video generation on your computer at home. The best part about this is of course it's completely free for you to install and what I love about it is it is so darn easy. You don't have to have any special computer knowledge, you don't have to know how to code or install things from GitHub. It's just very simple. As easy as installing pretty much any other program would be on your Windows machine. Now don't worry, I'm not forgetting about you Mac users either. This also does work on certain Macs, but I don't have access to those Macs, so this tutorial is mostly centered around Windows. But even if you are installing on Mac, this still could be a great guide. Now here is the really cool part about today's tutorial. Everything you see here, the whole recording, installing the AI video generator, is actually all running on the Gigabyte Aorus 17X Gaming Note. Notebook. Now this is pretty special because this little laptop can actually take on the entirety of my YouTube recording creator setup. The local AI that we are going to be running today is powered by an RTX 4080 that comes inside this thing and man, this is one of the very few laptops that is out there that I can actually say is local AI ready and it is truly awesome that Gigabyte is able to sponsor a video like this one where I just get to teach you guys how to install some local free AI. This channel would not be possible without its sponsors so if you're interested go check out this beast of a laptop link in the description now let's move on with the tutorial all right everybody this is the ai model that we are going to be installing locally today stable video diffusion this is a really great video generation model as you can see no doubt from these images right here this thing is capable of very realistic videos so the first step in our tutorial here is going to be figuring out if our machine can actually run the stable stable video diffusion model. There are some minimum requirements. Like I said, I'm going to show you how to do this on Windows. What you're going to want to do is hold down control, then shift and press the escape key. And that is going to bring up our task manager. And this is going to give us the information we need about our computer to tell if we can actually run it. And once we've opened up task manager, we're going to want to go down to the performance tab right here. Once you click on that, you'll see a list of different items. We are going to want to look for GPU. As you can see, this this particular laptop has two GPUs, a built-in Intel one and then the dedicated NVIDIA RTX 4080. Now if you don't see any GPU at all down here, the likelihood that you can run this thing is pretty slim. However, if it says NVIDIA, and if I click on it you can see that is confirmed right in the top right hand corner up here, our chances get a little bit better. We're going to want to go down and look for dedicated GPU memory. As you can see, I have 12 gigabytes down here of total dedicated GPU memory. If it says eight or above, you have a very good chance that you'll be able to run this thing locally. It's great that this supports a pretty wide range of GPUs. A lot of you will be able to run this today at home for completely free. However, I'm not entirely sure if the particular installation that we are doing today actually works for AMD. I will leave a a note on the screen right now in editing to either confirm or deny this. All right, so now that we've figured out whether or not we can actually run this thing, let's go ahead and click the first link in the description of this video to get started on installation. Today, we are going to be installing something called Pinocchio, which is like your gateway into running local AI on your computer. It's a really phenomenal program, very easy install, as you can see, one click. As you can see, there's a lot of things that we can install. We have real-time stable diffusion, audio generation AI, all kinds of stuff. But you'll notice that yes, stable video diffusion is absolutely in this bunch. So this tutorial is going to be more than just, you know, how to install video. It's also how to install anything with Pinocchio. This really deserves a video of its own. Absolutely the best way to install local AI at the moment. It's super easy. Like I said, we're just going to click on this download button right here and it's going to take us to this location. Depending on what kind of machine you have, you have different installs. Obviously today this tutorial is for Windows, so we're going to stick with Windows, but you can also run this on M1, M2, or M3 Max, some Intel Macs, or even Linux machines. So we'll go ahead and click Windows, then click to download Pinocchio for Windows right here. Next thing you'll want to do is open up your downloads folder, and we'll see what we've downloaded here is actually a compressed zip folder. So the installer is inside of this compressed folder. What we're going to want to do is double click it. We will then see the application right here. We're going to want to just drag this application right to our desktop or wherever we want to really. 
and Windows is going to go ahead and unzip it for us. So you'll see now Pinocchio setup is right on our desktop over here. So now what we want to do is either double click this or just open it. But as you can see, something is going to come up here saying Windows protected your PC. It's an unrecognized app. This might put your PC at risk. What we want to do is click more info and then we can click run anyways. Now, if you're worried about this message, I urge you to not worry because it's actually entirely safe. Pinocchio is trusted software. Me and much of the community has used it and it has been one of the best programs for local AI I've ever seen to date. It's now going to pull up this security prompt. Do you want to allow public and private networks to access this app Pinocchio? You'll click allow. Now, once you install Pinocchio, this is the first thing that you are going to see. A little window that we can then full screen here labeled settings. It'll show us the version, the home where all of our stuff is saved, and then what theme we want, and we can just click the save button. Good work, everybody. You've successfully installed Pinocchio, but now we have to install Stable Video Diffusion. As you can see here, there is going to be a Discover page, kind of like a store where we can actually browse and install all of the different AIs. Now, you can either search up top or just scroll down until you find Stable Video Diffusion right here. Now, installing pretty much any of these other AI apps is going to be very similar to installing Stable Video Diffusion, so like I said, this tutorial more or less is just an install for pretty much any AI AI app inside Pinocchio because that is just how easy Pinocchio is uh, and here you can see it is Nvidia only so that double confirms that for me yeah you cannot run this on AMD machines my apologies however it's still worth it to install Pinocchio because a lot of this stuff does in fact run on AMD GPUs okay moving along we're going to click stable video diffusion and as you can see it's going to have this little download button we are now going to click it it's gonna open this second window up now this is very important do not click this download button again because it's going to open a second installation and that can screw your whole installation up. Ask me how I know. So yeah, make sure you don't click this twice. You only click it once and now we have this window as well. As you can see, there are a bunch of requirements in order to run stable video diffusion locally. Thankfully, Pinocchio is going to be able to install all of this stuff for us just by clicking this little button. This is why local AI used to be so difficult to install because we'd have to do all of this different stuff ourselves and it would be a real big pain. So let's click install and as you can see, now we have a command window that is going to be running through all this installation. This can take quite some time so don't be wary if it takes like 10 15 minutes something like that you're gonna just want to let it do its thing so once you've installed all of those prerequisites, it's going to pop up with this little icon right here saying save as. All you have to do is then click the download button. And once that runs, you will now see that you have stable video diffusion in your homepage. So what you want to do now is click on that. And as you can see, we actually have to do yet another install. Yes, now we have to install stable video diffusion itself. So under files here, you can see this little install button. We will click on that and then go ahead and click the install button once more. Yes, I am aware that it is a lot of just clicking different install buttons and waiting for stuff to happen. It can take, you know, 15 to 30 minutes to get all of this done, but it's not like you have to do this every time. And trust me, this is absolutely the easiest way to install this stuff locally. The stable video install is complete. Now we will see a start button where that install button once was. If we click on that, it is going to run stable video Fusion. As you can see, it gives us two URLs here. You can click either one of these, but I would just go ahead and click the network URL, and it's actually going to open up a brand new browser window. And this is our interface for actually generating with stable video diffusion. It's quite simple. And as you can see, we can actually change the model version from SVD, which is regular stable video diffusion, or SVDXT. And SVDXT is like the regular stable video diffusion model, but it runs at a higher frame rate of 25 frames per second. I'm just going to move forward with the regular SVD model and we will do that by clicking load model. So now it's going to go ahead and download this model. This is going to be another little wait time as it actually downloads the SVD model. But once we've downloaded it, you know, we have it. So this is a lot of that first install stuff. By the way, if you're interested on in checking the progress of your download,
downloads. Feel free to click back into Pinocchio where you can see the data log and that right now we are 75%-ish done with that download. And finally, once everything has loaded up here, we can see stable video diffusion and the full interface appears. We've actually got quite a few settings that we can change around here, very similar to stable diffusion if you're familiar with that. We can change the frame rate up to 14 frames per second, like I stated earlier. Motion bucket ID, which is something that I am not familiar with. They've got sigma minimum, sigma max, number of coals, max CFG scale, minimum guidance scale. I'm fairly positive that we will get pretty good results out of this thing if we just leave all these settings on default. Fault. The main ones that you'll probably want to change are the FPS here and then of course the width and height if you want to generate in a smaller resolution or a higher one. Now the way that this model works is you actually upload images to it either a JPEG or a PNG so we do need a starting image to base this off of. I think the best thing to do here is go and grab some amazing art from you guys on Discord. We have a fantastic AI community in my Discord server and they always are posting amazing AI works of art such as this frog on a lily pad so i'll go ahead and upload that right into our stable video diffusion and then we scroll down to the bottom and we just click the sample button and now it's going to start to create a video out of this image like i said if you want to check the progress of your generations you can always go back to your log inside of pinocchio and check it out all right guys and our first video here has been generated as you can see it's only one second long and if i click it it's actually Actually quite a beautiful little video here I'll full screen it for you guys so you can get a better look at this it's actually really really nice this could be like a nice little repeating wallpaper or something like that I'm really happy with the way that this turned out it's just some beautiful light streaming in on this frog you can see the water is actually rippling and the plants are moving in the background as well really quite nice this is the biggest downside with the local AI video generation I've noticed so far is that it does take a little bit more time than you'd get on a server and that makes sense we're running it on consumer grade hardware not server grade hardware designed to do this kind of work I do think this is going to improve over time but if we want to run this locally right now this is our best shot Right now, I've got it back to the default settings, which has the FPS at 6. What I think this is going to do is essentially just create a longer video by running it at a lower frame rate. So this is the image I'm going to test next. This is another image, obviously, from the amazing community on my Discord server. It's a very animated image of a cat splashing through some water, so I'm hoping to get some great movement out of this one. Now, if you decide to upload an image that is not the aspect ratio that you're going to be rendering the video in, it will actually smush it down automatically for you. It doesn't appear that we can change the way the cropping works, but in this scenario, it actually looks like it works out pretty well. And our result is here. Let's check it out. All right, very interesting. So it does seem like my theory was correct there. Less frames obviously produces a longer video at a slower frame rate. The movement that I was hoping for here would be the cat sprinting forward, kind of like that playing in reverse, but it looks like the AI picture the cat a little bit differently, flowing downwards after he already jumped up. Still, I love the movement in the background of the various particles it definitely realized that it's a slow motion video of the cat really cool to see looks like it tried to keep the cat fairly coherent the only thing that really got messed up with the cat is his ears and eyes here is one of my favorite Midjourney v6 generations this really looks like a scene from a superhero movie or something like that it's very cinematic so I want to see how the AI video generator handles something like this now for settings here I'm definitely going to increase the FPS a little bit we'll double it to 12 frames per second and as for steps I'm actually going to increase it to 50 by doubling the steps and doubling the FPS essentially we'll just have a higher frame rate video that is the exact same length let's go ahead and see if we can't make a movie scene out of this all right and this one has in fact generated let's check it out this one definitely is pretty good, except for there's a little bit less movement I think in the character there there's a lot of movement with the fire in the background but it definitely kept the character in the center very static. I truly hope that today's video helps you run some AI video entirely free and entirely locally on your machine at home. Remember, if you make anything awesome with this, I'd love for you to share it with the rest of the community on my Discord server linked down below. And huge thanks to Gigabyte for sponsoring today's video. It's truly awesome that they are willing to sponsor something like this where I just get to teach you guys a really, really awesome way to run AI locally on your own machine at home. See you guys in the next one. Goodbye.